This is Michelle, your host, and this podcast is with Lindsay Morgan, Placement Coordinator, Student Futures, at the School of Arts and Creative Industries at Edinburgh Napier University. Hello, this is Michelle at Dasami Publishing again with our latest Dasami Bookworm podcast. And I am delighted to have um, my um, companion in chatting today as Lindsay Morgan. Lindsay, please introduce yourself to our audience and tell us what position you hold. So my name is Lindsay Morgan and I'm the Placement Officer for the School of Arts and Creative Industries at Edinburgh Napier University, but I wouldn't say that my job title really describes what I do accurately. Um, I do organise lots of placements and internships for our creative students, but also lots of community projects. We do a lot of work in prisons and schools and um, lots of interdisciplinary projects with all of our creative students. That sounds like quite a lot of work. (laughs) Uh, But first, before we go into asking the questions of what you do, I have to say we are, we always have great atmosphere, but we're in a beautiful room with the most gorgeous books. Would you please tell us where we are, Lindsay? Yes, we're at our Merkiston campus at Edinburgh Napier University, and we're in the room that holds our Robert Louis Stephen library collection. So all around us is the collection of books in there. They're really beautiful and there's a gorgeous smell in here as well of all the all the old books. Absolutely. And fortunately, the books are all locked away, so I don't have to be searched when I'm leaving. <laughs> they are absolutely beautiful, and uh, it's definitely worth a visit to the university, even if it's not just a visit here. You can book him um, to come and see it. You can make an appointment. Anybody can to come and look at the collection, so... Oh, I hope they provide gloves for the old pieces. Yes, they are locked away, but they do provide gloves. That's why you have to book in and have everything in place to come and see it. So I love to see that because whenever I watch a show and they're going through old materials yeah. and the, if they don't have the gloves on, I panic when I'm watching it. <laughs> and then you watch them with all of the proper shows yeah. and they've got the white gloves because we want to protect that history. It's very important for the students so that they can learn from it. So uh, to go a little bit more in depth into what you do, Lindsay, please uh, tell us about the projects and then we'll delve further into any favorites you might have. Um, So the projects usually involve our work placement modules. We have lots of different modules in the school that involve our creative students maybe doing 40 hours, maybe doing 200 hours on a project. So sometimes we bring all these students together to collaborate. Um, We've had great examples with National Museum Scotland, um, with the prison service, as I mentioned before, and often socially just projects as well we're trying to do, and projects driven by students and what's going on in their lives at the moment. So it's often quite topical with what they care about at this moment in time. I have to say, um, with the Jasami intern program that we do run, we have been fortunate to have quite a few of the Napier University students. And the caliber of their work ethic, their talent, and their follow-through is quite exceptional. I'm always excited when we have someone who, who wants to work with us through it. So I have to compliment you on the work that you do there. Yes, our students are great. I think they're quite different to students in other universities, but they're very motivated they're very talented they know where they want to go actually it's very vocational yes and I see the difference in the interns that do come to us with when you've got that motivation attention to detail is very key so now I've heard and kind of know a little bit about a project that is near and dear to your heart, which we'll talk about now, uh, which we are going to be supporting on our website because I think this is very important would you please tell us more about the project you're working on? Yes, so one of my absolutely favourite projects of all time is Bleeding Star, which is actually Bleeding Free in Gaelic. Um, We got together lots of different students across the whole university. It's been a project that's really been running since 2018. Um, And it was all about period poverty, it's about period dignity, it's about menstrual health and equality for women in education. We started it when the Scottish Government announced free products for everybody in education. 
Um, but we wondered, how are they going to do that? Because often it can be really embarrassing. You know, you have to go and queue up at reception and say, can I have a, a pad or whatever? And that's really embarrassing for young people. So we wanted to look at that. We also thought that products should be free for everybody. They certainly shouldn't be taxed luxury items. Um, everybody should have access to period products that needs it. Um, and we wanted to do this in a really sort of loud, um, eye-catching way and involve lots of students and be really inclusive. So the project had kind of two main strands, but it's grown a lot bigger since then. The film strand, which is a documentary we produced called Bleeding Free, we have a screening of which tonight, and a design strand, which looked at a communications campaign, it looked at designing dispensers for products um, all over Scotland, and also we wanted to do events that really got people thinking so we had the campus bloody big brunches where we had bloody marys and period themed food and drink and educational displays and live music and actually drag queens was a big factor of our of our bloody big brunches as well um, as part of the project we went to uganda because we wanted the project to have an international perspective um, Scotland is world leading in what it's doing for um, period dignity and equality but there is amazing work going on all over the world because there's not a country in the world where period poverty isn't an issue. There's not one country. It's, it's really bad in the UK, it's really bad in the United States um, and Africa actually has a lot of great initiatives, particularly Uganda. So we took six students over to Uganda in 2019. Thankfully, this was all before COVID hit. So we were very lucky that we could have these big events and go on this trip. But we went and we met with so many wonderful organizations, which you'll actually, you'll see in the film. There was iRise International, Days for Girls, um, just wonderful organizations that do work with local communities to help make reusable products when they don't have access to products. Also do educational programs, um, myth busting and that kind of thing, because all over the world as well, there are just strange taboos and myths, and that just makes young people suffer even more. Um, you know, simply even hanging stuff out to dry can be really shaming, but you have to have clean products. So worldwide, it's a major issue. And I think that menstrual health um, affects half of the world's population so much. I mean, hormonally, health wise, um, so many girls drop out of education because they just don't have products and, and they can no longer go. It's something the whole world um, needs to tackle and that's what Bleedings Are and Bleeding Free was all about. And our students, our placement students that worked on the project and continue to do so actually, have just been inspirational. They're so creative and you know the designs they've come up with, the event planning, the film, um, the shorts, the social media, it's all just, just spot on. So it's something I, I really, really do care about and I'm, I'm so proud of the project and, and its impact and continuing impact. Lindsay, it's such an important subject, and I do have to admit I knew nothing about this. Uh, you, sometimes I think when, when we live in a bubble and when we're past that point of our life, we actually, because we don't encounter it on a daily basis, we're unaware. You would think in today's society with you know the sophistication we have, with the technology we have, that something as basic as women's health in this particular area has been left unaddressed it until this point in time. I think, yeah, there's a big issue with women's health issues not having research put into them. I think if menstruation was a male issue, there'd probably be a lot more research and probably products would be free, sadly, for everybody. Um, so I think, you know, there are a lot of people that kind of don't believe almost that it exists. They say, well, poverty exists, but what is period poverty? You know, surely everybody can access something. And it's it's simply not the case. And it's not a underdeveloped country issue. It's everywhere in the world. Sometimes the richest country in the world have the worst problem with it. At the moment, they think it's one in five um, people in Scotland are affected by period poverty. Um, now products are meant to be free for everybody, but you still have to go to the chemist and, and ask for it and go through certain hoops. Um, but yeah, it's it's a really unfair scenario because it affects women and it affects their ability to go into education, their ability to hold down jobs. And also, you know, if you're having to decide between food or, or products, 
that that's just not right. Um, condoms are free often and for good reason. And I think there's a strong argument that period products should be free for, for everybody as well. Absolutely. And we're standing behind it. We are going to put um, a link on our website, on our affiliates page, for anybody who wants further information. And of course, there'll be a link in our description. I have had more conversations about this subject in the last two weeks <laughs> than I've had in 30 years, yeah. Lindsay. And I love that, though. I, I love that. I, I, I like people talking about it and it not being embarrassing or shameful. I'm so glad that you've been talking about it. I am. I am grateful that you've brought it into my life. I will have to say, I you know, I'm not engaging in ages, but I am of the age that I had to, and I speak freely about a lot of subjects. But I had to take a deep breath and then broach it with some of our female interns, uh, Leo, who is from Germany. I did have the conversation with her. She did say that their universities do provide it. I I'm not quite sure what they're doing throughout the country, but I was very happy to hear that at least the universities there are are um, contributing towards this so you've went uh, you've gone and visited Uganda what is the uh, do you have another big project that you're looking for in the next year or so um well we want to ideally the goal with the film bleeding free is we want it to become mandatory viewing for pupils in high schools across the UK I think it should be seen by everybody, by boy, boys, girls, non-binary, absolutely everybody. So we're working with schools and teachers and the council to look at a plan to do that. It's a really educational film and it's really eye-opening, but it's also fun and engaging. So that's the kind of plan for the film. Actually, funny that you should mention Germany. We're going to Frankfurt next month to screen it at Frankfurt Applied Sciences University. Oh, excellent. So that'll be, that'll be really, really nice. And there is a lot of international interest in the film. And I think, first of all, the topic, you know, that's applicable to the whole world. But also, actually, you know, in terms of students working together collaboratively on projects like this, and the institutions we're meeting in Frankfurt are really interested in that idea, getting students together to tackle a social issue that needs that needs um, attention. It needs to be addressed, and I think education, I always say knowledge is power, as it's well said. I wasn't the first to say it, but I agree <laughs> with it. And I've been on the, uh, the site, and just a couple of the small documentaries, and the one where you, you were asking um, the, the male about what they knew about it, and they all had different answers and varying degrees of, oh my gosh, what do you know, know and don't know? Uh, and that in itself was very interesting, so I'm quite excited about the movie that we're going to be looking at now. Again, there will be a link on the website for everyone to watch. So that's a phenomenal goal. Now, what about the support? Where do you gain support from this? Um, in terms of support, financial support, financial support. So we did have a lot of funding support for this project. We kind of had to pick it and pull it together from lots of different sources. The Scottish government have been very generous in supporting the project. Um, they also funded um, all the Hey Girls products that we stock on our campus because Hey Girls are a great organisation to buy your products from because it's a buy one, give one charity. So um, we buy from them and that means that everything we buy, people in need also get. So that was an ideal partner to have for, oh. our, for our project. Um, but we also got funding from Santander who support or well they used to support student mobility so that helped us fund the students taking the trip to Uganda because the students could never have afforded that with, without the support from Santander. We've also had some internal funding from the university, from um, learning and teaching fellows as well. All kinds of pots we've pulled together to make this happen um, but it's been definitely worth it. Excellent. So you, going forward, you'll continue, continue to have the support. Yes. I mean, in universities for projects like this, you tend to have to kind of keep applying for funding year on, year in, year out. So we have applied for funding this year for public engagement and we've got it and um, also for funding to pay our marketing placement student, Stephanie, who's fantastic. So yeah, we keep applying for funding from different pots and we'll, we'll continue to do so to support the project. Um, Bleeding SAR is, is very important to me, but obviously it's one project like this and we've actually done some great other projects similarly with lots of students contributing to really, really important projects with great agendas to them. 
It's wonderful that the students contribute so much. So when they come in and they're working on this, how long will a student work on a particular project? Is it for the full school year or is it maybe two years? How long generally will they work on a project? So it's a bit boring and technical in university, like, but we have lots of modules for work-based learning and all of those modules have different requirements. So on a project where you're bringing together lots of different students from different disciplines, um, it can be a case of some are doing a lot more hours, some are doing less depending on their availability and, and their other commitments. Um, but generally speaking, these projects can be quite long term. I would say the shortest would be a trimester, so a few months, but then projects can really roll on for, for several years as well. And you're kind of taking in new students each year to contribute. Um, in publishing, for example, Avril runs the Big Read, and that's an ongoing thing that different publishing students work on each year. Actually, the publishing students um, did our educational booklet for Bleeding Star, which is absolutely wonderful. They did an amazing job on it. I'll definitely have to stop by and pick up a we'll copy of that. We'll have them. There'll be copies, um, I, th I believe, at the screening tonight, so we'll definitely make sure you get a copy. Excellent. So we'll also have that linked on our website, too. What would you think uh, is the most important aspect from the projects that you work on that you get out of it personally, Lindsay? I really love when there's outcomes. I mean, I, I really enjoy helping students um, get meaningful experience that helps their career, boosts their confidence. I, I love seeing students succeed. But for me personally, when it's projects like this and you have this outcome at the end that you can take real pride and satisfaction in, I really love that. Um, to give you another quick example, we had over 40 students working with SGN, which is the gas network, and there's redundant kind of fossil fuel sites that they own all over the United Kingdom. And they wanted to work with our students to come up with creative ideas for how to use these spaces for good effectively. Um, so our students worked in teams and they came up with wonderful, amazing ideas and SGN are now implementing them. So the first site at Windy Gates in, in Fife, um, all kinds of our students' proposals for hedgehog hotels and for um, sort of water reserves and for reflection gardens and community spaces. It's all it's all happening there. Um, so for me, that's wonderful. The fact that generations of people in, in Fife will go onto that site and use it um, for biodiversity, for green things makes me makes me really happy. It's amazing to think of the the diverse uh, projects that you actually do work on here. Yeah, I mean they're really really diverse. We, well, the project we did with the National Museum of Scotland was linked to their Rip It Up exhibition, which was about the history of Scottish pop music, and um, our students made a film for the exhibition, which was interviewing fans all over Scotland about their favourite iconic venues. Now, Glasgow has the best iconic venues in Scotland, but I knew a lot of these venues and just hearing people talk about them, it was just wonderful. But then they also did a Future Features campaign. So after hours, we got access to the museum and we filmed lots of our student bands and performers um, and we made music videos about the sort of next generation of, of pop music. And yeah, so they can be the projects are so diverse and actually we would encourage anybody that's got an idea for a project to, to get in touch with us because yeah it's a wonderful way to, to make change happen. Oh and that's an excellent idea so we will add that link to the description and also have it on our website so that you'll be able to uh, contact Lindsay yourself or whoever might be in charge yeah, for the project. And, and I can forward on and share with my team if it wasn't necessarily a creative project so much as something else. Yeah. That Because we don't ever want to say no to something that hasn't been proposed yet. Yeah. We never know where the next idea is coming going Sometimes come from. the best ideas just land on a phone call one day you weren't expecting. Somebody says, hey, I've got this idea. What about if we did this? And you weren't expecting it, but it turns into something wonderful. Absolutely. I, I agree with that. Last year, I remember um, I woke up one morning in July and said, I want to go international. And I've been blessed with five international students. So, um, And it's not a be careful what you wish for, but sometimes you're very grateful for it. And that provides us with the opportunities. So uh, going forward, is there something else that uh, that you want to give us a sneak peek on? Well, it's very early days, but we're hoping to work with space, 
which is Scottish Prison Arts and Creative Enterprises. It's a new charity which is opened up to promote um, more arts-based learning and activities in Scottish prisons because at the moment it's very vocational. Um, so we're working with a wonderful artist called Mary Ann who wants to create a children's book um, created by parents in prison. So she's going to be working with parents in prison, both male and female, who want to contribute to creating this book. Um, she'll then work with our graphic design and publishing students to produce the book and we hope to be able to print a limited run which will then go to families that have um, a member of their family in, in prison across Scotland. So a project like this, oh gosh, it's so much um, coordination and organisation required. There's lots of logistics to get through. Um, but I'm really excited about this one because again, I think it's one of those projects that has the chance to make such a huge impact and yeah, to go a long way to help to help these families and these children and um, something to feel proud of that they, they contributed to the creation of. I can absolutely say your job is not boring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's what I said before. It, my job title, it doesn't really say what I do very well. Uh, often they don't. Yeah. I liked the one, you know, um, back in the day you'd say Jack of all trades or Jane of all trades or whatever it might be, but it's having a little bit of, of everything and I think that gives us the opportunity to expand our horizons and when um, younger people, students, university students, college students have the opportunity to try different parts of life, different creative aspects of life to find out where they want to develop and go forward, you know, future-wise, it's so important because they might try something that, oh, I'll have a taste of this in your creative department, not really thinking, and then that might be the focus of their life going forward. So Napier has been a key part of our life in the last year or so, and we look forward to a long-standing, continuing relationship. So if you have any other questions, uh, please see the description or check our website because I will have full details on there. Is there any um, parts of wisdom that you would ask, uh, want to say to any potential student about that might be afraid of investigating? What I would say to students is that students are often very focused on I need to get experience in the biggest company possible. The biggest company because that name will look great on my CV. But actually, small organisations, SMEs, charities, projects where you can really take the lead and make change ultimately will be better on your CV. When you can say, look what I did. I was a leader, do you know, I, I, I project managed this, I delivered this. Um, it's better than sort of going to a big company and maybe just shadowing or observing. So I think don't think about the big names so much as think about the experience you'll be getting. And also think about the culture of the organisations that you're going to work for. Um, does it reflect your values? Does it reflect your ethics? You know, I think the team of people that you're working with and that culture is really, really important. Yeah, so that would be my main piece of advice. You know, look at all the options and don't just think, oh, it needs to be this company or, or that company. It, the best experience can often be with, with the smallest organisations or the smallest idea that then just goes into something fantastic. And those are the ones that, that have the most opportunity for growth. If you, you know, water a giant oak, it's going to grow, but it's already there. If you take something that's small and you water it, you'll be able to see that grow. And I think I'm so happy with what you said, Lindsay, because uh, with that opportunity, when someone can invest and have the opportunity to see where they can go with it with a project that they're not focused in and you have to go this way or you have to go that blinded you know um, tunnel vision is the worst for creativity and that's what we try to offer with our interns and I have to say that they usually have the best ideas and they'll you know communicate that and say oh yes because every year I have fresh ideas and new input and that's why the program is so important to us is that yes I love to say it's a symbiotic relationship uh, we're providing them with the experience they want 
but I tailor it to what their goals are and then I say yes if you want to expand on that then come to me if you want to get into not just the editing but a little social media and that's where the opportunity lies exactly so and and we are small but we do well for that so thank you <laughs> yeah no I mean I see it across the board in all of our creative disciplines actually that students often have that focus and I think you know see the bigger picture look at different opportunities and um, yeah they can often yield the best most transformative results Lindsay this has been a most inspirational chat I have to say I've thoroughly enjoyed it thank you thank you very Me much too. now I'm going to put you on the spot I often forget to say this a shout out to someone can be little shout out to anyone I want. anyone you wish okay well I guess it would be remiss of me not to shout out to my son Harry I think he'd be quite cross if it wasn't Harry and my husband Pete and also my dog Maggie and my cat Lucy oh wow oh see you got the furry family in there as well yeah. that's what we call them furry family yeah. members um, they are part of the family 100% uh, absolutely they are I agree with that we have uh, Jasami team Jasami family and then we have the Jasami furry family members who are often in the podcast sometimes yes. in the background if I'd been at home I would have got no peace from Maggie and Lucy I can tell you that <laughs> well I thank you so much again for the chat my shout out is to all those potential interns those students Students, uh, whether you're just graduating on your uh, working on a dissertation just graduated uh, we're here and always interested um, and looking forward to a, another magnificent year of your creativity so I wish to say thank you very much from Michelle at Jasami Bookworm podcast and as always I wish you a sunny day <laughs>